I was doing with Gazette Bresser and Sullivan Colley, who's coming off a brutal first round knockout at Bellator 284. Sullivan, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm happy to be talking with you. Um, five days since your fight. How are you feeling? I'm good. I mean, I didn't really take any damage in the fight, which is nice. Um, I got a few things that are bugging me from the fight camp, which is pretty normal. So, you know, taking it easy this week and trying to kind of let my body recover. Um, you said in your pre-fight interviews that you wanted to hurt somebody. Um, and, and you did. Um, you did. It was a brutal, brutal knockout. Um, how do you feel about that knockout? How how do you feel about your performance? I mean, I, I really can be happier with my performance. Um, I mean, I never put anybody out cold before. Like, obviously, I've always wanted to. Um, like, this is one of the things you kind of fantasize about when you're like a kid thinking about doing this sport. You know, uh, when I said I wanted to hurt somebody, that was kind of like. Uh, a comment on this crazy sport we do more than me like actually wanting to like fit, harm somebody you know in a serious way <laughs> so, i mean i don't have any like ill will towards uh tyson or anything um you know it's just it's part of this crazy sport we do yeah, I mean, absolutely man um you know you said that uh, i mean it's the first time you put somebody out cold how'd that feel and it was a hell of a sensation. Felt pretty powerful after that, I would say. Um, I mean, yeah, you don't want to be on the receiving end of too too many of those. So, you know, hopefully he uh, takes some time off and lets his, lets his brain kind of rehab from that one. Um, what, what was the game plan going into that fight? Uh, the game plan was to mostly strike. Um, you know, I can always wrestle if it's there. But um, I thought I was a better striker than him, and I thought I could take him out with the striking, and uh, um, I thought that would be, you know, more exciting. So I just kind of wanted to try to do that, and then, um, they, you know, it ended up happening. I mean, you're credentialed in your wrestling, but you've been knocking people out, you've been TKOing them. I mean, is it just is it just the feeling that you like you like you like doing that more than wrestling? Um, I would say, I mean, striking is probably more fun than wrestling. Wrestling's like a wrestling's a grind, man. Like that's a big part of the reason that uh, guys who come into this sport who aren't wrestlers like have trouble getting good at wrestling because it's just like not as fun as hitting pads, you know. It just never will be. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's just kind of. I like to start my fights with striking and see what you know, move around and kind of see what I'm seeing and see what openings are there. And, um, you know, when I've been, I mean, the openings have been there early on in fights and I've just been taking them, you know, um, the plan is never like exclusively to strike. I've been, I've like, just in my like pre-fight kind of like run throughs. I was like, I've always like wrestling's on the table. It's definitely something I'm, I'm planning on doing when the opportunity presents itself. But I think if you can, uh, be comfortable striking is so much easier to wrestle than if you are forced to go out there and grab onto somebody immediately, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Um, and then with that win, you entered the top 10 rankings. How does that feel? It's crazy. I mean, uh, I don't know if I was really expecting it, but you know, I guess it makes sense. I've been taking people out early and stuff. So it's definitely an achievement. Um, you know, it's a, be in the top 10 in a major promotion especially with just four fights i think it kind of speaks to what i've been doing all the you know long hours hard work we've put in yeah absolutely and on top of that you kept your 100 percent finish rate and uh i mean with that it's still you're still having a little left the first round in your bellator career i mean how important is it to you to keep that 100 percent finish rate um i don't live and die on that um, you know, I just think I've been fighting how I fight. I don't I haven't really been like going out there, like really searching. I mean, I guess I always am searching for finishes, but it's not something I'm like, I'm going to take this guy out of the first round. I'm going to come out fire and so I can take him out early. I've just been fighting how I fight and it's just been happening, you know? So that's, that's I'm just going to keep doing that. At this weight class and this sport with four ounce gloves, like if you're athletic and fast, like I am, like you just got to touch people, you know? I mean, and, your future opponents must be terrified because 
they haven't seen it, you know, at least in Bellator, they haven't seen you go 15 minutes and your cardio with your wrestling, right? So like <laughs> they have they haven't seen that aspect of you. Yeah, well maybe they think there's like a maybe they think there's there's a hole there that isn't there, you know? Mm -hmm. Um but you know, people people have yet to see that one of my biggest strengths is my uh, endurance. Like I feel, you know, more confident in my stamina than really anything else. So I think uh somebody's gonna think that they can pull me into deep water and have an advantage and they're going to be, um, they're not going to be happy with what they find there, you know? <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, I can't wait to see it. Um, so it was seven months in between fights. Why the layoff? Was it injuries or was it just Bellator couldn't find you a fight? It was just Bellator. Yeah. Couldn't find me a fight. They, um, it was, you know, for a while, it was, they just didn't, like, they weren't trying to put me on, I think. And um, and then they had trouble finding an opponent when they did. And, like, we ended up, they decided they were going to put me on this event. We had, like, four or five opponents back out. So, it's always really difficult. But um, I think it's going to be a shorter layoff this time. I've heard rumblings that I'm going to be on one of the upcoming events. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that that'll happen. I'm pretty excited about it. I mean you're coming off a huge win over big tuna. Like they were, they were pumping him. Yeah. He was, he was all over it. There was nothing really about you. How disappointing was it to be sitting on the sidelines after that big win? Yeah. I mean, that was tough. That was tough. I thought after that last one, I would kind of, uh, you know, get some more hype and attention going. But um, I mean, I think I did after this one. So it just took one more than I anticipated but um I think you know now I'm in the top 10 and I think I got the people at Bellator um pretty excited and I think that uh we're gonna build off this momentum now I mean you you finished big tuna you get this brutal brutal first round knockout with your you know like what, what else what else what else did they need to see right yeah <laughs> you know um well who I mean is there a specific name that you want next or is it just anybody in, in the top 10 um it's i i think we want to avoid trying to go too fast i'm in the top 10 i still only have four fights done although i've been super dominant once you start cracking into the top 10 and fighting the the tougher names you really can't go back right. so i want to do this the right way it's not going to be as slow as they would bring up like a, a boxer say but um i want a couple more like I think journeyman type guys, guys like real fighters, guys with winning records, guys with experience, but probably not guys in the top 10 built, you know, just get, get a little more experience. And then, you know, once we got a couple more in the back, a couple more of those in the bag, we'll start fighting the roster guys, the, the top 10 guys for, you know, hopefully a lot more money and stuff like that. Are you still on your first Bellator contract? Um, yes. The first couple of fights, I fought were like one off contracts with Bellator. And this is my this is my second fight on the my current contract with them. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um and then finally, uh I wanted to ask, are you a writer for a magazine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, where where did that come from? Um you know, they uh the guys who run that magazine is called, it's called Skill Set Magazine. They're based out of Arizona. They did an article on Ryan Bader. And so I just like met him at the gym. They're cool guys. And uh, they were like just posting that they for fighters. And um, I just like, I, I, mean, I was a political science major. I wrote a ton of essays in college. It was something that I always like thought of myself as good at. So I figured I'd uh, take a crack at it. And, um, it, you know, I ended up working out. I've done a lot of freelance writing for them and that kind of replaced my other day jobs as like my way to, you know, pay the bills, like other, uh, aside from fights, you know what I mean? And it's like, there's like way less punishing on my body than like working like a labor job, or, you know what I mean? Working like as a, at, at the bar on the weekends. So like, that was a godsend, you know? Awesome, dude. Wow. That's good. I mean, so not only can you kick people's asses, but you can write 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 an essay about it. I can write an essay about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, dude. Awesome. Well, um, what's a um, what's the perfect time frame for you, man? Uh, 
you ho hoping to kind of you know chill for a little bit and then get back into camp maybe get one november december like what's the perfect time frame for you yeah i think like no like november would be yeah november would, or december would be ideal to give me like a couple weeks to i need my like i take my week off and then i'm gonna start immediately getting into like in between camp training where i'm like you know trying to put on muscle work on like technical stuff where i don't have to like really like obsess about conditioning you know what i mean so the in between camp stage is a nice little opportunity to kind of sharpen things um i don't want to be out for a long time though i'd imagine although probably get me on before the end of the year and that would be i would really love, love that i mean like i said knocked out big tuna you get a brutal knockout i mean they, they, they got to keep your ball rolling come on exactly exactly <laughs> Austin Sullivan, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Um, you want to plug your social media, plug any sponsors you might have. You want to thank anybody? The floor is yours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, check me out on Instagram at Sully Collie. Um, number one sponsor I'd like to shout out is Guardian Revival, um, a nonprofit that does uh does work for veterans and first responders, uh, in terms of mental health. So if you go to my Instagram, check out my bio. I got all the information you'd ever need to know about it there.